say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hello. What are you doing out there in the woods? Looking for food. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think we got some. Recently, somebody asked me about venison recipes. Now, it is venison season, bow season, right. one of my favorite times of year. Now, for those of you who are just joining us and have just found the show, I spent the better part of my early life on Kentucky Field. That's right. As a youth, I lost the use of my right arm in a motorcycle accident. I had to shoot the bow with my teeth, which it's, worked very effectively. Your teeth are still all there, too. Uh, most That's of good. Them. <laughs> and I competed in national uh, and local mm -hmm. archery tournaments and did pretty good. Yes, you did. But it really works well. So here we are in archery season. A lot of people around the country are getting ready to go into their archery season right. or their early season for venison. And I was not a trophy hunter. To me, the trophy was that precious, wonderful venison. That's and right. if And if it is processed properly, it can be some of the best meat in the world. It really, it is. really is good. Now, tonight we're going to show you a few things to do with venison. Now, one thing that we did not too long ago, and if you want to reference things we've done in the past, uh, we post everything after we air it on right. YouTube, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You can go back and look at it, hundreds, maybe thousands of different segments and recipes. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this, been doing this a long time. Yeah, we have. So, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, if you want to go back and look at how to can venison, mm -hmm. you tell me. You remember when we talked about, you know, we were running out of freezer space, right. so I thought, let's can some of this. What does it taste like? Delicious. It's like uh, Denny Moore stew. Exactly. It starts to take on, if you put a little, maybe just a little bit of salt and pepper in there, it starts to take on the flavor of beef more. It's delicious. Now, what happens when you, it's already in the jar and it's already done, when you want to make a stew or soup? It's ready to go. You could eat it out of the jar, which we have done. <laughs> Usually, when you are doing a stew or a soup, you have to wait on the... Right, the meat to cook. Yeah. Your vegetables don't take too long, especially if you saute them, right. cut them up and turn them over a little bit and you get them done in the pan. Delicious. So guess what? You've got this ready-made jar of fresh venison. Right. We did a stroganoff recipe with that right out of the jar. Ooh, That's onions, one of my favorites. sour cream. Oh, yum. Mm, over, over noodles. <laughs> yum. Yummy. Delicious. Now, here's a little bit of footage of, of my years with Kentucky Field of us hunting venison. Mm -hmm. And here's the way that I actually shoot deer. And this has worked out rather well for me. I mean, it's a great way to shoot, and I've got to help people all over the United mm -hmm. States, all over different countries, people from Australia, people from South Africa. You're pretty good at it, too. I've seen you sneak up on a deer with your bow and arrow and get yeah, one. Yeah, do what you got to do. That's right. And again, <laughs> I love to shoot a big buck when he's around because they usually a big body and right. have a lot of meat. But to me, I'm about the venison. Yeah, the little ones taste good, don't they? They do. And we have to manage our population of deer. We really, really do. Right. If we didn't do that, if hunters didn't manage the population, conservationists, really do take care of the management of deer. Mm -hmm. They play an important part. That's why it's important for you to buy your hunting and fishing license. That's right. You help <laughs> out when you're doing that. Not too long ago, we did something with brats. And that was delicious too. Absolutely delicious. Now, venison is very lean. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of fat in it. So with my venison, I would use pork. Right. And we would do the same. We could follow the same brat recipe, which we have right here. In a second, in a little while, between recipes, we're going to do a shortened version of the brats. Now, you can change that recipe however you want it to make it a little more spicy. You can add red peppers. You can add whatever you want to make that flavor a little bit different. You can smoke 
those sausages. Right. And here's, you remember our smokehouse sitting right yes. over here? Mm -hmm. It's starting to cool down. We're going to start using that more. We get all kinds of stuff to smoke. We're going to get ready to get started. I'm going to go over here and get the charcoal started. Our lump organic charcoal. Okay. All right. Are you ready for some red beans and rice? I'm starving. Very simple recipe. Let's do this in one pot. Okay. Now, you know, you can do this on your stove, do it in your oven. You can do it however you want to do it. Today, we're just going to take some charcoal, put it down on the bottom. You know, typically. Right. Like we always do. Like we always do. We're going to get that hot enough to cook in. You know how I hardly ever measure anything. That's but good. because folks ask for it, we will <laughs> measure it as best we can. Now today what we need is some red beans. Now if you choose to take these beans and you cook them yourself just like you cook brown beans or navy beans, right. a little ham hock in it, you're ahead of the game because you've already got that flavor right. in it. If not, if you want to get two cans from the store, rice, we use the instant, makes it okay. easier. Yeah. We're using brown rice. So basically we're going to need about one onion. We're going to need about a half to three quarters of a green pepper. We're going to need some celery. We're going to need, obviously, our meat. Right. Now, as we look at our sausages here, you can, which one's the venison? The one in the front. The darker. Yeah. You can tell because that's a lot leaner right. meat. Now, this is one of our brats, and this is some smoked sausage. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take that 12-inch pan, we're going to get it nice and hot, put a little oil in it. We're going to take our sausage, cut it up in little pieces, okay. brown it. Okay. Get it nice and brown. Those look delicious. I don't want to drop any of those. Those are precious. Those are. Oh, those smell good. After that, we're going to come back and we're going to add our pepper, onion, and celery. We're going to turn that over and saute that till it's nice and ready to go. Then you know how we'll make a little place along the side, then we'll brown our garlic. We don't want to get it too, you know, if you get your right. garlic too done, it gets bitter. Then we're going to come back with some chicken broth. Now we've got about three, two and a half, three cups here. We're going to put that in there till it boils. And then we're going to season accordingly. We're going to put some salt and pepper, a bay leaf, and we're also going to take some uh, Cajun seasoning that I've come up with, or if you've got anything special that you like, put your seasoning in there. Once that gets to boiling, we're going to add our rice and our beans. Put my sausage back in. It's a fairly quick dish. One pot, no mess, good to go. You know what? I'll tell you what let's do. People have been asking for venison. So let me show you something in case you didn't see it. We took venison, put with pork, and look what we did. Look at that nice, wonderful meat. We've got that chunked up. We're going to grind that. Now, as you know, as you look at that, there's no fat in that. So we have to have some pork fat okay. and some pork meat to grind up in that. The first thing you need, obviously, is a sausage casing. Right. Now, you can use the collagen ones, or you can use a real live hog casing. You know what it's made out of? I don't want to know. Pig intestines. I smelt the bag. It wasn't nice. Well, when you open a bag of hog casings, don't expect for there to be a friendly bacony smell. It didn't smell good. It smells more like chitlins. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do, they're, they're packed in salt. Now you can get these lots of different places, sporting goods stores. You want to pull those out, and here's Let's show us let's just what they look like. It takes two hands to get them out of the bag. Yeah. In their dry form, they look almost like like an, an onion ring, a really stinky Taste onion one. ring. No, I'm good. <laughs> now, the first thing you do is take those out of the packages and rinse them off under the sink in cold water. Right. And then put them out and let them set in warm water. Then, what we're going to do is, if you will, they're kind of folded up on themselves, so you want to Loosen the top up until you can find the opening. All right, now we're just going to take this little, this is actually the smaller funnel for this that where the meat comes out of. Put the end over that and we're going to run water all the way through. Let's keep lifting that up and it'll go all the way through there and it gets the rest of that salt out. That will flush that system out, get all that excess salt out. Then, because we're going to take a little bit of olive oil so that will fit over there. All right, now we're going to take this, put it directly over top of this. Keep Always keep the center of this like so. So if we see the center mass going to left or right, we go the opposite way with the other one. 
And I think this meat's gonna be coming out into this. Just keep pulling that up so the meat will flow right out into this. We've got a couple pounds of meat, about a pound and a half of pork and a pound and a half of ground venison. We've already got those ground up. One thing you do want to do when it comes to wild game or pork, pork I think is around 150 now, they're saying. Wild game, probably 160. All right, now if, I, if you will, just go ahead and tie that off right fairly close to the end. All right, so I like to try things and really check my spices. Right. And I've adjusted this about a million times and I've got it about where I like it. Delicious. Now, I tell you what, the caraway seed has such a distinct flavor. It really makes it the does. brats to me. And everything else you add is kind of what you may or may not like. But this has got a nice round flavor. It was good. It was really good. Really good. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a half a teaspoon of sage. Then we're going to come in with a teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Let's go ahead and do a teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of marjoram, which, wow. according to some folks, that was one of the secret ingredients that the colonel used in his chicken. Really? Yep. Okay, now I've ground up some of that caraway seed just to kind of release some of the flavor. And we're going to go about a teaspoon of that. I really think, think that adds... it's about a teaspoon? I doubt it. I'm, we're going to go... Oh, well, it's close, isn't it? And I'm going to take some dried milk, kind of a bonding agent. I'd say there's probably a tablespoon there. Hmm. And now, that's our spices ready to roll. It smells think? good. All right. We're loaded over here. Let's take probably a quarter of a cup of onions. Of an onion. Let's cut those up really fine. Go ahead and toss those in, if you will. Start mixing. All right. Now, as you mix, I'm going to start adding the spices. You can use any kind of beer you want. This is uh, Killian's Red. It's got, it's kind of a little darker and it's got a sweet taste to it. It smells good. Oh yeah. All right, we're going to start. Let me smell it. it. Smells yummy already. Wow. See that beer and the spices? Boy, don't they smell good. Now, we're going to watch this coming out and we're going to kind of, you can control the flow here and you can control the flow up here. I may tell you to slow down a little All bit. Right. And I'm going to kind of push it up so it comes out uniformly. And then when it comes out and I get it as long as I want it, I'm going to do a twist on it. I'm going to lay it down. The next one's going to come out. Right. I'm going to do a twist on it. I'll try my best. All right. Go ahead. And let's it. go ahead. Now watch. You'll see the air pushing through. See there? It's, I mean, it's in good shape. All right. Are we ready? Ready. This is fun. Here we go. Let up. Some more twist. All right, let's scoop. It is ready. Now this is brown rice. Oh, yum. Go ahead and scoop up a bowl. Yes. That was delicious. It smells wonderful. burning up. I don't see a drop of sweat on you. Because I've been watching you cook. This looks really good. <laughs> Look at that. Does that smell? Oh, wow. Like down south. Mm. Yum. That's a meal. That's a dinner in itself. Yeah, that's a meal. It's got everything you need. You got beans, you got rice, you got your veggies, you have your meat. I love it's it. It's a full deal. Man, this tastes like Louisiana. Oh, it's good. Better. This is better. I'll tell you what, let's finish our mm. meal here. Clean up, because we got company coming. That's right. Surprises right around the corner. Mm. Let me eat this real quick. Look who I found in my kitchen. It's my mommy. We told you we're going to have company. Mrs. Farmer, last time you were in my kitchen, you remember what you made? Mock apple pie. From zucchini. Exactly. Now, I challenged people to try this and see if they could tell the difference between apples, and guess what? What? It was a hit. Good. A lot of people liked it. Now, we're not done with the zucchini theme. No. Nope. Thanks to my sister Debbie. Uh huh. You, did you steal a zucchini from her mom? Your dad stole one of those <clears throat> zucchinis. You know what? I love your confections, I love your cakes. You still have to fix someday your chocolate cake with your chocolate icing. Oh my goodness. 
You know what I'm talking about? Mm hmm. Mm. You can't make anything better than that, except for maybe the zucchini cake. Tell us how this works, Mom. Well, you just mix up like you're going to make any kind of a cake, but you add your zucchini and pineapple and some raisins, which kind of gives zucchini it a little and flavor. Zucchini pineapple. See, I uh -huh. like where you're going there. Now, you have already taken your zucchini and peeled it. Yes. Taken the seeds out and yes. shredded it. You have to do that when you steal things, you know. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want anybody to know. Yeah. So how much zucchini How much zucchini do you have to have? You have to have two cups. All right. Well, let's get this thing started. Okay. I'll be glad to get going. Now, why are you mixing this up? You got three eggs. Tell some stories. You know, I, want, I love stories that tell me what you remember about growing up in the country with your grandmother. My grandmother. Grandma Carr. My grandmother was, uh, she was very good for me, very good for me, because I was a spoiled city kid, uh -huh. and I came to live with her, and I felt like it would be business as usual. Well, I soon learned it wasn't business as usual. I was given chores to do. Such as? Uh, I was supposed to watch the babies, baby chickens in the brooder house so they wouldn't drown themselves. Little baby chickens are not very They're smart not at bright. all. So I had to do that and clean up after them, feed them, and I also had to feed the chickens, collect eggs, which was hard because some of those chickens are really mean. I've written stories about those chickens. They were bad. But it was good for me. I had chores to do, and I was expected to do them. But once I did my chores, I could go to the woods, and I could wade in the creek and play and do whatever I wanted to. And that was good. That was really good. You know, it seems to me like I remember she had a well right outside the house. Am I right? Mm-hmm. She did. Now, was that her... Was that... The water she had, did she have running water or was that the way wow. you had to crank? You had to crank and pull it in. When I got big enough, I took care of it. That was another chore that I had to do. And I thought I was really a big shot when I could do that, carry in the water. But there was a little spring that had the best water. And uh, usually we were going to have company. If she's going to make lemonade or something like that, I would go to the spring and get that water. And it, oh, it was always cold and it, it tasted so good. So you put the eggs, how much sugar was that? That was two cups. Two cups of sugar. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's vanilla. vanilla. Yeah. And the oil. I'm going to mix up the oil here in just a minute. And that was one cup of oil. Uh-huh. And next, this is supposed to be a little bit fluffy. Then next we add the zucchini. And the two cups that you stole from Debbie, the daddy stole from Debbie. Yeah. Shame, shame. I hope the sheriff doesn't come calling. That's all I can say. Zucchini and some flour. Get that going. Now, is that just all-purpose flour? That's all-purpose, unbleached. Gotcha. I like the unbleached. I do everything the old-fashioned way. When you when you grow up with two grandmothers, you just kind of do what they do. And you're basically going to stir in three cups of flour. Uh huh. And what about papo car? Papa Carr was what you would call a silent partner. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he just, he never got excited about anything. He left that up to Granny. <laughs> Granny could get really excited about things. That's coming together, Mom. Yep. So we're talking about coming in with some pineapple, mm -hmm. and raisins, and you can do nuts if you wanted them. One teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and one mm, teaspoon of sugar. I had it all together. Next is pineapple. Looks like you've crushed that up pretty good. Mm-hmm. And raisins. Now these have been boiled and they've kind of plumped up a little bit. All right. Just mix these up and then we're ready to put it in the oven. What else do you remember growing up in the country? Well, I minded really well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, back in those days, you know, everybody had lots of jobs. Uh -huh. I mean, you're talking about just the water. You had to get, it was physical labor involved in everything. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a whole lot of sense of humor when it was, you know, let's get this done, let's get that done. I'm sure there was time for that later. But, mm -hmm. you know, people were busy, constantly busy. They really were. The only time I can remember them not being really busy was on Sundays. And then Papa would sit and read the Sunday paper and Granny would read the Garden Encyclopedia. This book was about kind of green thumb, this thick. She really did. So she knew what to do. 
She had the most beautiful yard. She had trees, she had bushes, she had flowers. She was always planting. You know it what was I beautiful. Whenever we would stay with her, way before dark, the radio would come on and she'd listen to that farm report. Everybody that handles uh, pesticides that are restricted pesticides, I think we should say that. That's correct. Barney Arnold. So he was alarm clock. Yes. 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 Barney and Arnold. And they would turn it up loud. Yes. And you'd be sound asleep and yeah. howdy, neighbor. Barney and Arnold. I think, I'd have oh, never remember no. that if you hadn't said that. Yeah, WHAS? Yeah, I think, I think that's so. what it was. Yeah. Barney Arnold. So we're there. It's time we're to there. Pour it. You, I just have to little, put it in what here. What did you put a little crisscross I've already put some in there. Yeah, I put some there a while ago. If I don't uh, end up putting it in your lap. You need a scraper? I think I could use some help. Yum, that smells good. I could eat that right like that. I could drink it. Your daddy you like loves a protein shake. Pineapple. All right. Okay. That smells wonderful. I'll put it in there. Okay, we got talking about chickens and grandmas and grandpas and we forgot to talk about the icing, but it's a very simple recipe. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you do your icing. You have to have a fourth of a cup of butter softened, a fourth of a cup of cream, six ounces of vanilla bits, that needs to be melted, and you melt, you get all this together and let it get to room temperature before you start adding your powdered sugar and mix that up and you've got a nice frosting. It's really a nice frosting. But now if this, I put this on one of these, in one of these casserole dishes, I think you could probably use half of this. Cut that in half? Yeah, cut that, that in half. Because I probably make a scot of icing. Yeah, because I got a lot of icing on that. You really. can set the rest of it aside and have it a spoonful at a time. You could put it on muffins. Uh -huh. It'd be really good. Put it on bread. Toast, <laughs> <laughs> bananas. What's the chances of me getting a piece of that cake, Mrs. Farmer? I'm gonna let you, you do go, the cutting. Okay, you go. Yeah, this is Debbie's birthday cake. This is gonna be Debbie's birthday cake. So tell cake. her I got the first piece. Ha, ha. You, That's what she yeah. gets for traveling out of town and having fun up mm -hmm. in Amish country. Yeah, but she did let us steal a zucchini though, you know. <laughs> there were two of them and I only used one so she's not really, really upset. Was there Pink Panther music playing in the background when Daddy was sneaking into his doo -doo, doo -doo. Yeah, Pink Panther. So last time it was a zucchini pie. Mm-hmm. This time it's a zucchini cake. Oh, there look at that. Let me mm, smell that. Look at all that. No, you can, I'll take that right there. Okay. I'll take that. I'll be happy to have that. I'm going to cut into that. I think I like this better than butterscotch. Now, Mom, when are you going to make your chocolate cake and chocolate icing. Someday. How's it taste? Oh, my. Can you taste the pineapple? Mm. You know what, it's got, it's got a kind of the consistency of a carrot cake. Well, that's just absolutely excellent. I got one more idea. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see puppies. That'd be great. <laughs> Aren't they cute? They are so cute. Thank you, Mrs. Farmer. You're very welcome. This is quite excellent. quick half hour. Yes, it was. How did you like the red beans and rice? They were delicious. We ate the whole pot. Did you have a bite of mom's cake? That's good cake. Oh. Is she, I hope you're leaving it here, right? Okay. No, it's Debbie's birthday cake. Oh, we don't get to keep it? No. I'll just take another piece out of it I'm then. Take half of it. I right, take some more. Okay. You know what? Uh, that brings this show to a close, and that means it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats, and puppies. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY Canoe, Kentucky. Furniture World Superstore. Housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.
Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association, and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement, Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. We know that hardworking Kentuckians can be held down by back and neck problems. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky is a multidisciplinary center to take care of your back, neck, and nerve pain. Our goals are pain control, precise diagnosis, and correction in the least invasive way. From minor aches and pain management to injections or even complex and reconstructive spine surgery, he specializes in minimally invasive spine surgery. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky, we treat all of our patients like family.